Okay, so what's about to happen? Oh, apparently... Do you know what's about to happen? No, I just know that there's a lot of twos. All right. <laughs> it is going to be 22 hours, 22 minutes and 22 seconds on the 22nd of the second, 22. Basically, it'll be all the twos. Okay, so 10, 9, 8... Hang on, wait a minute, you can't even see it. It's actually... <laughs> I've actually got about four seconds to go. Three, two, one. Hey! Hey! I don't think it's going to happen for another 1,100 years or something like that. So celebrate away. We're going to have a cup of tea. And some crumpets. crumpets. So what are you doing, Bev? Um, changing a, some sort of wire on the back of the oatmeal. I don't actually know what it does. But... I know a piece of bad wiring when I see one. Um, <laughs> Stop looking at me. The torch is sorry. causing me problems. I know a piece of bad wiring when I see one. And this is a piece of bad wiring. Look at it. It's absolutely... Yeah, uh, it's... This is hanging on literally by a couple of threads. And I'll take this apart in a few minutes. Right. But for now, I need to get this one back on. <laughs> Currently. Working off. So this is the new one going on. Okay, so what we've done is, this is the uh, rather ratty piece of cable that we've taken off. And you can see just from the way that it does that, this is hanging on by a thread. But as Gaynor pointed out to me, it's actually a bit of a jerry rig. We, I thought it had a, a flat spade connector, but it doesn't that. Well, I'm not sure what it is. I think it might be a piggyback one. It is. It's a piggyback. Yeah, but that is like that. And, and the, the other end of this is not much better. This is literally hanging on by a few strands of copper. Yeah. And that was on our D plus whatever it is on the back of the alternator. I have no idea what that does, but this is the D plus wire or D minus wire, whatever. Um, so it's now been replaced. We have started the engine and tested. The alternator is charging. We can see the charge in the panel. So this piece of junk can now go in the bin. <laughs> so what's happening, Bev? Um... I'm standing here in a puddle of water because the bathroom pump has just gone. I was cleaning things up here in the wet room and um, that was it, it just stopped. So I'm now trying to find a way to extract what I hope is a broken fuse. Oh, Lordy, right. Hooray! It's, so a, it's a blown fuse. Hopefully that should be an easy fix then. Yeah, what in the name of Ned they've got a fuse in it for? I've got no idea because it's on the breaker panel. I mean it'll flip the breaker. Oh well. Double redundancy. Ah, right, the fuse is ever so slightly smaller, but it's a spring-loaded holder. It seems to fit. Moment of truth. Well, hey! Ah. Top tip number 94. <laughs> uh, get one of these out of the hardware shop. They're some sort of scrapery thing, but for... Just if there's any water that's not going down the hole, these are brilliant. Yeah. And uh, add another top tip, number 95, it'll come back to me in a bit. Um, the hair thing. There's a hair thing? Yeah, always make sure that you clean the filter. Oh, the hair trap. Yeah. Yeah, these things have in them a little tiny screw off debris with a wire mesh. And it traps hair in it. This one's not too bad. I'm not going to do anything with it today. But every couple of months, every couple of weeks, depending on how often you use it, take that off, clean that out. Water goes through the system far, far quicker. Much better. One of the reasons that um, Beverly and I feel that we are, do get things out of the channel is uh, we've just had a, a, a gift of a piece of wood which has got a nice uh, triangle on it 
but uh, what that means for us is that we will be able to remove our bottom step and put this in instead. So just to clarify, mm -hmm. what you actually mean is the bottom step's held in by screws and things at the minute. Yeah, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to... Um, remove all those screws. Remove all those screws and uh, put this in instead. But the and, thing and, then, is, and then the step will slide up and down on like, 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 like runners or reels sort yeah. of thing. But the thing is, I've not had to buy this and more importantly, uh, I've not had to jerry-rig anything because um, this is wide enough so that it will do the sliding action, which is what I want. So thank you very, very much yep. to our subscriber and viewer who brought it aboard. Absolutely. Don't forget to come back and get a cup of tea. <laughs>
and by far and away the best solution is to put a cover on the top outside of the hatch. But it's only one little thin layer of material. It is and um, if you really do want um, extra insulation then you can put um, uh, say camping mat underneath it um, and it'll be fine but uh, by far and away the best solution for keeping condensation down was because we have aluminium frames that go from the inside to the outside yeah and they just get so wet and damp but yeah because um, when it's minus one outside it, it's cold but the thing yeah. is at the end of the day we've tried insulation on the inside we've tried all sorts of stuff but this this works So um, I've just um, gone up and checked uh, my finished product and <laughs> hallelujah, I don't need to uh, correct it. Um, so um, I'm just cutting off the excess fabric and if I have any fabric where I think it's going to um, fray or anything like that, then I will use the... Um, You've been nicking my stove lighter, haven't you? Oh. you? You've been rummaging through the kitchen again. I nick the stove lighter and that will um, basically anything, any bits of fabric that will fray, um, this will just melt it and that's my job done. So this week um, we're actually going to answer two questions in our viewer question of the week. Why don't we go south for summer? No. For winter! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's, a very short, to... it's a very short episode. We're not birds, we're not starlings, we don't migrate. And thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. The first is why don't we migrate south for winter? <laughs> oh dear the very very short answer to that is family um we both have family um which contains el well our, our, our parents are both very elderly um yours are yours are my mum's my 96 going on 97 and, and my, my mum and my aunt who are my surviving relatives and my cousin but she's the same age as me my aunt and my uh, mum are in in and around 80. this area bangor belfast has got great connections to the mainland so if gainer had to be at her mum's farm she could be there tomorrow morning it's as simple as that i could um if i have to go to my mum's it's half an hour over that way um and I would go by car and that's another reason for being around here my mother because of her age doesn't like driving in, in bad, wi uh, bad winter weather so she gives us the car so we have a car all winter long to go around and do things get messages get parts for the boats and go see places um, that's great that's very handy mm. the other thing is um, I actually do work in the winter <laughs> I work six months uh, of the year and um, I think that's a bit strong well, okay, fair You definitely do three. I definitely do three months. I work three months. <laughs> yeah, but, and that helps. But because because we're both UK citizens, this is our country, we're in the tax system, so th there's no visa issues, there's no employment issues or anything like that. You just go get a job and it just is what it is. Uh, if we were abroad, we'd probably have to get a work visa and apply for things. It's just more complicated. Mm. As far as sailing is concerned, this is actually a fantastic place to sail. <laughs> I know we've done a lot of blowy days from Bangor blogs and things like that, but I'll be honest, this, this winter has been exceptionally bad in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, generally speaking, in previous years, uh, we've had storms in January and February. That's that's fairly typical for this area, but four in a week is just absolute. Everybody's gone. Exactly, but yeah. you know this weather has been exceptionally bad. Mm -hmm. But you know we have been able to do winter sailing, and I love it round here. Um, just to be able to go out at any time, you're not in a lock or anything like that. You know, it's no, twenty-four hour access. You're in a lock. You're not in a Sorry. lock. You're not in a lock. Um, yes. So it means that I've got twenty-four hour access to the sea. Admittedly, I'm not going out there. <laughs> 
because it's too it's too blowy but that's a different issue mm -hmm. there is so much you can do right here there's so many interesting areas to seal in and when it comes to the summer i just love being able to go and explore them and taking you along with us yeah i mean we went to western scotland last summer and the islands and some of the some of the areas there were just they were breathtaking we really really liked it and in the summer it were pretty warm as well we we were not cold no okay fair enough we're not in the shorts and t-shirts like just yet but <laughs> Hey, you went swimming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that, 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 that's another thing. When when the spring gets going, you've got you've got the spring, you've got all summer, you've got early autumn, and even even maybe up to early winter. Um, it's nice enough around here to sail, and there's some great stuff to see and great things to do. So the Irish Sea, let's be honest, is a pretty tough environment. Mm. I mean, it seems a bit crazy to practice your sailing in such a uh, tough area to sail in because the coastlines are very rocky the tidal streams are very strong I mean the wind gets going it's a full-blown gale when this starts up here isn't it mm. uh, uh, and the fact that you've had to learn about tidal streams and tidal heights and things like that like Liverpool for goodness sake 10 meter tides yeah um, and if you're watching in the US that's 33 feet exactly yeah. but this is where we have learned and cut our teeth. Yeah, so what we're hoping is that when we go to other areas, which are not quite so extreme, um, we'll have a slightly easier time of things because we're used to this. And we had an additional viewer question of the week, which was... So uh, where are you intending to cruise to this, this summer, Colin? Um, so basically our plan for going round Ireland has been on ice for two years. So as I say, this year we want to go around Ireland. Now there's a couple of places on our I really want to go. Uh, one of them is Baltimore. The original Baltimore. Yes, not the one in America. We're not, we're not crossing <laughs> the Atlantic. <laughs> no, um, I also want to go to um, Star Wars Island. The Skelligs, yeah. And the last place that really want to go to is the only fjord in Ireland. That would be Clary Inlet, I believe. Yeah. So those are the places that are on my to-do list. What's on yours, Bebby? Um, the southwest coast, Bantry Bay, Dingle, places like that, um, because it's almost tropical down there. Mm. I, don't, I don't have to go abroad. <laughs> mm. be, if we can get down there, it should be lovely. Um, so those are the places on our to-do list, but what yeah. I'm interested I'm, in... I haven't finished yet. Okay. Loch Swilly, Mulroy Bay up in the north. Mm -hmm. um, they both look very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, probably a bit less warm and tropical than somewhere around down by Cacker Daniel and Bantry Bay. But I'd like to do that. I would like to see some of the Western Islands. I think that, that I think the scenery there could be absolutely spectacular. Mm. Uh, I suspect the sailing will be rather challenging. Yeah. Um, so those are the places we'd like to go, but I'm quite interested in what you think. Where should we go? Where's a great place to anchor or somewhere that's got to be on our to-do list? Um, we're quite a, open. a pertinent question that I would like answered if anybody has the answer to it is if you do sail in that part of the world, where do you hide when a storm like this comes in? Yeah. There doesn't seem to be many big marinas down there. Mm. There seems to be a lot of little small harbours, little islands to shelter behind. But if a big blow comes, where do you go? Mm. That's something we need to look into. Mm. So there you have it. That's why we don't fly south for the winter like a, like a flock of starlings. And where we're planning to go for the summer. Oh, um, I just hope it's going to be hot and sunny. And I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the Irish wine's made from potching. <laughs>